Praise the Lord. Amen. The things that accompany salvation, part two. Things that accompany salvation, part two, subtitle of the message, the power of contentment. The power of contentment. Last week we touched on some things that are some of the extra benefits of being a saved person. You know, there's more to being saved than just getting a ticket to heaven and escaping hell. That's big, that's huge. But there's, there's a lot of stuff to be obtained and enjoyed in this life that we're living here on this side. A lot of stuff that God wants to, to uh, enjoy and to do for him. I mean, this, this, this is an important life uh, that God has given us. Um, I looked at that word to be content and it really means to be at rest, to be quiet in your mind, in your present condition. It means to be satisfied and to be at peace. Not complaining, not in opposition, not really desiring anything different than what you have been given. And it carries a moderate degree of happiness. You can be content without being really happy. You know, happiness is, is a whole different definition. But the question that comes to my mind is something I'll pose to you. Are you content with God? Are you content with God? That's a question every Christian needs to ask themselves. Am I content with God? A lot of people are not content with God. They need extra. They need something in addition to God to find that place of contentment. A person that's discontented is a person that, that you kind of don't want to be hanging out with too long because they'll, they'll put you down. They'll turn their back on you. They'll cut and run. They'll quit. God said he has no pleasure in those who draw back and those who quit. If God don't have any pleasures in quitters, then why should we have pleasures in quitters? But a person who's discontented will quit on you in a second. That's why there are divorces, unnecessary divorces. That's why all kind of stuff happens to sever relationships because of people who are settled in this place of discontentment. Being content is a powerful place to be. There's power in contentment. Apostle Paul over in the book of, of, of Philippians, we're not going to go there, but he says that he's learned, he learned how to be content. It wasn't just something that came naturally. He had to learn how to be content in every situation, in every circumstance. He said he, he knew how to abound, he knew how to, to suffer need, suffer want. And he goes on to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so when you got Jesus, and when he got you, amen, that's the starting point where you can begin to train yourself to be content. Amen? Because if you got Jesus, he got you, that means that everything else is second. And everything else can, will come to you. Another question that pops into my mind is, if you're content with God, are you really satisfied that he's everything that he has advertised himself to be in the Bible? But God has said some powerful stuff about himself in this Bible. He's advertised himself through many stories and scriptures, lives, to be just absolutely awesome, almighty, without rival, as that song was saying. Amen? And are we content that he is all that? Well, if you belong to him, you should consider getting to the word and find it out. Because I'm telling you, the world is not going to answer this question in the, in the positive in any kind of way. The world is, is, is like, you know, God is not real. He's a figment of your imagination. He is like something that I don't have to be concerned about in this life and there's no life after this. The world thinks all kind of crazy stuff about the God that we believe and that we honor, that we reverence. 
and that we say is real and that he is absolutely more than everything that Bible says he is. Amen? So if they think that about your God, they think that about you too for serving God. So you got to be armed, man, with some serious information, with a serious portion of the anointing that comes from the presence of the Holy Spirit in order to even be close to being impactful in touching and imparting the love of God, the power of God into their lives so that they can see and they can get saved and they can deliver it from the devil's lies that, that, that they've been entrapped by. In the book of 1 Timothy verse, chapter 6, verse 6 through 12, I'm going to read from the New King James Version. It says, Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and peered themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, or O woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Verse 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Saints, as a child of God, I'm going to announce to you today that there's no situation or no circumstance where you will ever be hopeless. You should ever be hopeless. Amen? There's no condition that life can throw at you where there's not a reason to have hope in God. In Matthew 19, 26, write it down, because I'm going to go through the scripture pretty fast, and you can't turn that fast. It says, with God, all things are possible. So that situation that looks dire, amen, and looks like it's coming to take you out, is not an impossible situation if you're with God. In Mark 9, 23, it says that, bring it down, bring it a little close to home, if you can believe, then all things are possible with you. If you can believe, all things are possible with you. How many can believe? Amen? Some people can believe while they're in church, but then, you know, I ain't in church now, Pastor. This is real. This is pressure. I don't know if I'm going to make it not right now because, you know, this, 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 is, this is hitting home right now on Tuesday, maybe even Sunday at 1 o'clock. But on Wednesday, on Thursday, are you with God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? If you're with God, this scripture applies to you too, amen? It says, if you can believe, all things are possible with you. And if you're with God, all things are possible with God, amen? So I'm here to tell you, if you're a saint, if you're a Christian saint, so you feel the Holy Spirit, God's with you. He's with you. And then the situation that you, the devil is trying to make look hopeless is not hopeless, amen? Saints, we're talking about the things that accompany salvation, the things that accompany salvation have been made available to us, but there will be opposition. There will be a challenge against us in our efforts to procure these things, and it looks sometimes like there's an impossibility attached to getting this stuff that God says already belongs to us. Notice in the Bible, over in the book of Numbers and Exodus, the children of Israel were freed from physical bondage, 400 years of Pharaoh's slavery. And a promised land was before them where all the full benefits of their freedom was located. 
I mean, they were free from slavery, and they were brought to the threshold of the promised land where every benefit, everything that accompanied their safe salvation from slavery was available to them. But they had to move into that promised land by faith in order to appropriate the things that God said accompanied their freedom. But because they heard a negative report, you got to be careful who you listen to. You got to be careful who you hang out with. You got to be careful who you receive calls from and, and share your heart with and, and allow to dim the dump into your heart. You got to be very careful about that. Amen? Because God has a promised land for you to enter too. And oftentimes when people have forfeited their right to go into a promised land, they're still carrying that, that doubt. Amen? Or that fear. Or that unbelief. And they're not going to just keep it to themselves when they're talking to you. They're going to spew it on you. The children of Israel unfortunately heard a negative report from 10 people who didn't believe God. And it forfeited their right to go in and receive the things that, for them, accompanied their salvation from slavery. So it's one, it's one thing to be set free from slavery, but man, with freedom comes provision. Freedom comes provision. The United States of America is not a good example because they freed the slaves, allegedly. I think God has something to do with that. And they promised y'all 40 acres and a mule so that you could have provision after this freedom from slavery. But guess what? Somebody reneged on it and you ended up having to start from scratch when you didn't have anything to scratch to start from. You had to pull yourself up by your bootstraps but you didn't have any bootstraps to pull yourself up from and here you are today still prospering, amen? And flourishing in spite of that <laughs> y'all putting me in the wrong direction there. I ain't want to go there, amen? But there's a promised land, saints. There's some things that accompany salvation that's still available for the people of God. In 1 Timothy 6.12, it says, The fight, the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. You see, this can't be overstated too much because faith has been given to us, the measure of it, according to Romans 12. And the faith that God gave us is for the things that appear to be impossible to us. Things that appear to be impossible to us. Faith is given to us because faith can handle those situations and those circumstances that appear to be impossible. Faith then is for the impossible. This is what connects you to the power of God. This is what connects you to the anointing of God, to everything of God, the faith that God has given you. You see, it's given to us to lay hold on eternal life because God has given us this eternal life and there's an enemy that's standing there to try to keep you from enjoying the benefits of this eternal life while you're here in this life right now. See, eternal life doesn't start when you transition and go into heaven. Most people think that once I die, that's why I ain't gonna go to church now. I'm gonna wait to the last second and I'm gonna give my life to Jesus and I'm gonna go to heaven right at the last second. How many know that a lot of people who tried to wait till the midnight hour died at 1130 without even getting a chance to get saved? You need to tell somebody that when you're trying to witness to them and they don't want to listen to what you got to say, man, you might not get another chance. This might be your last chance. And the enemy is out there not only trying to stop those people, but trying to stop those who are in the house of God, in the family of God, trying to stop us from getting and reaping the benefits that eternal life has provided for us that begins the moment that you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen? See, it's eternal life that God says is our portion, is that very abundant life that Jesus says that he came to give. He said, I came that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. It begins the moment that you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It is not just life as a normal person lives like most Christians live, like a mere man or a mere woman. It's a supernatural life that God himself lives. It's the Zoe life of God, amen? The Zoe life of God, saints, is the same quality of life that God himself exists in. It's the everlasting life. It's a life that, 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 that supplies 
you fully of everything that you would need to be victorious in this life. It's full of health, amen? It's full of wealth. It's full of peace that passes understanding. It's full of victory over anything and everything that tries to come across your pathway to take you out before your time. It's the abundant life. It's the God quality of life. Amen? And God wants people to stop thinking of themselves as mere people, being scared to speak, being scared to do, being fearful of this, being fearful of that, operating the same way as the world operates. You are a child of the supernatural God of the universe. And he has given you his life. Amen? Y'all make him preach too hard, amen. Praise God. Tell y'all the Holy Ghost this morning. Holy Ghost. God, 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 God said, it's time for us to stand up, man. It's time for us to stand up. This plague coming on this earth. Say, my church, my people should have stood up and said, get out of here. And that thing should have moved. But see, my people have let the world baptize them for thinking that they're just like the world. Not realizing that the daddy that you call your father is almighty God. That you are born of him. Amen. That you are born of the same substance that he is. Amen. Somebody will get healed today in Jesus name. Somebody getting healed today in Jesus name. Can't no sickness stay on nobody. Amen. That understands who they are and what they've been made of. I don't care what the doctor said. Amen. Glory to God. Say this, this abundant life that God has given us contains the things that accompany salvation. And as Philippians 4.19 says, in this life God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen? It's a life where, as 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, that you will always be led in triumph in Christ Jesus. Always led into triumph. So where are you being led by the Holy Ghost? I'm following the Holy Ghost in the triumph. Amen? I'm following the Holy Ghost in the, but you're going, no, I'm going to the store in triumph because I'm going with the Holy Ghost. Amen? But you, I'm going to my job in triumph. Amen? I'm going to worship God in triumph, saints. Amen? Saints, see, God has given us his faith and we really need to value it. We need to develop it and use it every day in some kind of way. You got to use your faith. Strengthen it every day, man. You see, because faith is the master key to everything in God's kingdom. We're citizens of God's kingdom now. And this key of faith will open the doors that are before you, that God will lead you to. Every door that God wants you to go through that's before you, the faith that God gave you is the key that will open it. And this faith also will lock doors behind you that you need locked behind you. Amen? There's some stuff behind us we need locked. Amen? We don't need them, 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 them demons coming out of them doors trying to grab us and pull us back into where we came from. Amen? You need that key to lock that door behind you so that you can continue to move forward in God. Amen? Not too many things behind you can bless you right now, saints. Amen? Now in Isaiah 55, 6 to 8, the scripture says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to God, to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. You see, saints, the God that we serve, our Father, check this out. He parted the Red Sea. You got, to, you got to see this in your imagination. He parted the Red Sea, amen? This God that we serve, this our daddy, he made the lame walk, amen? He opened the blinded eyes and the deaf ears and he called a dead man back to life after he had been dead for four days. Amen? This God that we serve does not think and does not act like a natural man thinks or acts. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. We got to look at the way that God thinks, the way that God acts, the way that God thinks is there's, there's nothing that I can't do. Amen? There's nothing that's impossible with me. There's nothing that I can't change. 
to make work out for your good. Amen? This is God's thinking process, saints. Amen? There's nothing that can ever defeat me. That's, that's God's thinking process. And this God has authorized us in his word to come up to the level of doing and being the way he is. I, 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 I'm going to say that. Can I say it over here? Because I said so much. Because y'all didn't get that, did y'all? He, he said, my way is not your ways, my thoughts not your thoughts. As high as the heaven is above the earth. So my ways, my high. God got higher ways and thoughts than we have. Amen? He has authorized his children. He has authorized his children to come up to his level in thought, in action, in being. He has authorized us, amen? You see, this is one of the main functions of the Holy Ghost. We're talking about Pentecost Sunday. This is one of the main functions of the Holy Spirit who's been given us to show us the things that Jesus says belongs to us. You see, if you don't have the Holy Ghost lead you and guide you, you'll never be able to see this, the things that accompany salvation. You're always going to be a normal, mere human. It doesn't matter how much you come to church, how many messages you listen to, you can listen to message over and over and over again, the same message, a different message every time, but until you decide, God, I'm not going to try to bring you down to my human level so that I can handle you down here on this level. What kind of God would that be to serve? Amen? A God who comes down to our level. A God who's subject to coronavirus. A God who can, I, or anything else of this earth. God said, I want to get my people to elevate their thinking. He gave us the Holy Spirit. I'm going to elevate their thinking so that they can elevate their talking, they can elevate their doing. And they could begin to see the results that I have paid the price through my son's blood for them to operate in and to walk in. Amen? You see, there are some invisible things of God that he wants us to see. I have not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. There are some things that we haven't seen yet. <laughs> that God wants us to see sex, amen. If you know, if you can see it, if you can see it, then it's easier for you to get it. But you're not gonna be able to see it unless you allow God to elevate your thinking, to use the imagination that he gave you, and that the devil has hijacked a lot of imaginations. You got to cast his thoughts down in every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and allow God to use your imagination to show you the invisible things of God that God wants you to see. This Pentecostal Sunday, man, it's, it's, it's the best way to celebrate the Holy Ghost is to develop a relationship with him. Amen? And, and to allow him to lead and guide you into the deeper things of God. And he will show you the things that really belong to you that accompany salvation. God didn't miss anything. He did not leave anything out. He covered every base, every possibility that could ever come upon a person's life. You say, I provided a remedy. I've provided solutions. I've provided wisdom. I've provided resources. I have provided everything that you could possibly need in this life, amen? But the Holy Spirit is the one pastor can preach to he's blue in the face. And you can listen to him till your ears fall off. But if you don't allow the Holy Spirit, 
the one who comes to live inside of us, to begin to lead and guide you and elevate you to the point where you begin to see the supernatural things that he wants to show you, then you'll never see the things that accompany salvation the way God wants you to see them. I mean, though God is not a man. God is supernatural. God is spirit. We're talking about the Father that we say is Heavenly Father is spirit. If he's spirit, then we spirits too. And so we have the same capacity built inside of us to be able to do these things that God says that we can do. Amen? John 16, 13, Jesus said this. He says, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you of things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, he will take of mine and declare to you. You see, when the Holy Spirit declares or shows us the things that God has given to us in Christ, you will find true contentment in your heart. You will find true contentment. You'll know that you don't have to look any further. You don't have to drink anymore. You don't have to get high no more. You don't have to look for a husband or look for a wife anymore. You don't have to get a divorce anymore. That you're totally, completely complete and content in what God has given to you. Because all your needs, every kind of need, physical, spiritual, emotional, are totally, completely met in him. Amen? See, we are heirs of God and joint heirs of Jesus. And don't ever forget that God says that all things that Jesus has belongs to us too. Now, how many can believe that? I can believe it, amen? If Jesus said, he said all things are his, and, and, and God says that we're heirs of God and joint heirs with, with Jesus, then I choose to believe it, amen? Believing is a choice. Amen? In Matthew 13, verse 11, 12, Jesus said, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, this is, this is, this is a key right here, to, for whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. This is a key to receiving the things that pertain to salvation, the hidden things, the things that you haven't seen manifested in your life that you haven't even heard about, that you don't even know about. It's okay to admit that you don't know everything. Amen? As a Christian. It's okay to admit, God, I read that scripture 50 times, but thank God that you gave me another revelation out of that same scripture because you know more than I know. It's okay to not pretend that you're not the smartest one in the world when you're dealing with God. So God says, if you have received, in the scripture, he says, if you have, if you have, remember he's speaking to spirits. He speaks faith. He say, for whoever has, to him more will be given. That means that when God speaks, he gives. And we receive by faith. Father, I receive what you, I receive that you say I'm, I'm a child of God. I receive that you say I'm healed. I receive that you say I'm rich. I receive that you say I have the abundant zoe. I, re, I, I, re, I embrace it because you said it. I, re, I have this peace. I have it. Amen. Somebody come up to you and you're looking all bad. How you feel? Well, under the circumstances. No, not under the circumstances. I am healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because God says I am healed. He said whoever has. He's talking about the word. Whoever has more will be given. That's a principle of the kingdom of God that's basic. We're not going to get any further today. If you get this, God says all this good stuff belongs to you. You got to stop looking at your inventory, at your resume. You got to look at what God's inventory is in the word, at his integrity. If he says you're healed, 
Don't argue with him. Receive it. You say, if you receive it, then you'll get more healing. God says you're rich. If you receive it, guess what? You receive more abundance in that area. Peace. You receive more peace. On the other hand, he says, if you refuse to receive or acknowledge that God has given you to these things, this is a spiritual principle, man. The devil knows this stuff. It's time for us to learn it too. You say, if you refuse, well, you know, that's them, but you know, I, I, I you know. He says that everything you have is going to be taken away from you. That's the enemy's tactic. He wants you to deny what God has given you so he can take candy from a baby. <laughs> so saying as we close, as we close, I want you to thank God for his wonderful blessings to you today. Amen. Come on, say it after me. Say, thank God. Thank God for my health. I thank God for super abundant wealth. I thank him for supernatural peace. I thank him for supernatural and abundant contentment. I receive it. I embrace it. And I guard it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for his word, saints. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, saints, uh, if there's anyone out there who if you need prayer, you can go to the website, put in a prayer request, and we will pray for you. And if you want contact, we will contact you. The website is after the message on this. You'll see it posted. But if there's anyone out there who wants to be saved, if you want to get in on this abundant life, this everlasting life, see, this might be your only chance. You might not have a Christian come across your path because Christians are notorious in this day and age for not speaking up and telling you what you need to know to get saved. But I'm here to tell you today, the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, that you will be saved. If you get saved, saints, you're getting on this level everlasting life that God has promised to his children. If you want to get in, pray this prayer with me. And when you finish this prayer, if you pray it from your heart, you, you can be guaranteed that God has registered you in his family. And that you will never, ever, ever have to suffer another day being separated from the God of all creation, the maker of heaven and earth. So say this after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, that he died for my sins. I repent of every sin. I repent of every iniquity. And I thank you that he washes me with the blood of Jesus. And Father, I ask that Jesus come into my heart right now to be my Lord, my Savior. I receive him now. And I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to do this in Jesus' name. If you pray this prayer, you can always confess to anybody that you meet that you are a child of God. Thank God for this word. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Praise God.